My name is Wayne Roseman, and I'm chair of the Spring uh, 2018 Epidemiology and Lifestyle Council. I'm joined here by Amelia Benjamin, Professor of Medicine and Epidemiology at Boston University. Amelia, congratulations on, on getting the lectureship for the William Cannell uh, Lecture this year. Tell me what it means to you to, to have this great honor, especially since you're from Boston University, where Dr. Cannell spent most, uh, most of his career. It is just an extraordinary honor. One of my very, very favorite stories about Dr. Cannell is he was asked by a reporter years ago, where'd the term risk factor come from? And he sort of said, I, I don't know. And the reporter came back to him a couple of weeks later and said, actually, you were the person who coined the term risk factor, you know, fa factors of risk. And so to be giving a lecture named after such a giant in epidemiology is profoundly humbling. Great. Can you give us just a little preview of what you're going to be talking about today? I know your, your research is wide-ranging, wide but especially about atrial fibrillation and genetics. What are you going to be talking about in your lecture? So I'm going to be talking about the agenda going forward on the prevention of atrial fibrillation. We've spent a lot of time over the last couple of decades really understanding what are the risk factors for atrial fibrillation, including the clinical risk factors and the genetic risk factors. The dis disconcerting factor is that sort of a good news, bad news story is a lot of cardiovascular disease is either going down, leveling off, maybe going up a little bit. Interestingly enough, the incidence and prevalence of atrial fibrillation are increasing. And in recently published data, the lifetime risk of atrial fibrillation has gone from about 25% to in the mid-30s. Now, the bad news story is more people are getting atrial fibrillation. The good news story is that people are living longer with cardiovascular disease and people are living longer, and so they're having more opportunity to develop atrial fibrillation. But the bulk of my lecture is going to be focused on, okay, if we have this epidemic of atrial fibrillation, how do we prevent it? And I'm going to be speaking about matters so central to the American Heart Association's mission, which is primordial prevention, preventing the emergence of risk factors, primary prevention, treating risk factors once you get them, and secondary prevention, preventing uh, complications of the condition of atrial fibrillation. That's fascinating. I mean, I mean, it fits so well with the theme for this yeah. week's conference, which is risk prediction yeah. and what it means for risk prevention. So w what are some of the, the main things going forward that can really maybe help us turn around this the trend that you described as being some, uh, concerning? So I think that there are broad implications. The first implication is for patients. They should understand their family history of atrial fibrillation. Nobody asks about a family history of atrial mm -hmm. fibrillation. Um, that's important because disconcertingly, sometimes the first manifestation of atrial fibrillation, particularly in an older adult, is stroke. So we want to prevent that. And so we need a lot more research on what kind of screening do we need to do to detect atrial fibrillation early. So that's one area. Another area is research, is that we have very little evidence base about preventing complications in atrial fibrillation except for stroke. We know how to prevent stroke, by and large. We've got a wide range of medications that help prevent stroke. But we really have very little data to prevent heart failure and other complications of atrial fibrillation. And of course, the other public health message is we need to prevent the emergence of risk factors. Fantastic. Well, once again, congratulations on getting the William Cannell Memorial Lectureship. We look forward to hearing your talk today. Thank you so much. It's truly an honor.